We need to talk about the different types of RAID levels that are out there because as a DBA, you really, you'll be running up against this every day. You have to make critical decisions about it and it's just need to know information. That said, this particular video is somewhat of a, a primer or primer on RAID levels. So if you already understand RAID 10 and what it means and why it's, it's a good or bad, then don't watch this video. Just go ahead and skip to the next one, okay? Uh, but you need to know this about building your system and where to put the files and stuff. So before we talk about where do we put our database files, we have to have a discussion about RAID levels so that we can make intelligent decisions, okay? Okay, um, so where will we put our files? We're going to get asked this during the installation. Where do we want our database files? Where do we want the system database files? Where do we want tempdb? Uh, and so we need to talk about smart choices for those. Okay? So you need to know a lot of things, right? And you need to know at least two things about storage. One is your RAID levels and then how storage area networks work. We're going to talk about RAID levels now. We'll talk about storage area networks in, what is it, chapter 12. Okay, so we'll have a whole thing about that. You'll be very comfortable with it, okay? So this is just an introduction to RAID levels for DBAs, right? Okay, uh, and like I said, it's an introduction. It's a primer. So if you are already comfortable with your RAID levels, just skip to the next video. So what is RAID? RAID is a redundant array of independent disks. Uh, and the idea behind RAID is that it helps us mitigate a few key principles. One, every hard drive will eventually fail. Right? Hard drives, whether they have moving parts or not, are going to fail. Okay? So we want to add in redundancy to protect against failure. If one drive fails, that's okay. I still have another one. I haven't lost all of my data. Okay? Another key principle here that drives uh, RAID levels is every hard drive has a maximum IOPS. Okay? So input, output, operations per second. Okay? Hard drives have a maximum. Okay? Um, let's say, well, we won't have to give it a number here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could increase our total IOPS by throwing more drives at it? So what if I had two drives and I wrote 50% of data to one drive and 50% simultaneously to another drive? Couldn't I theoretically double my throughput? That's the idea, okay? Throwing more read and write heads or more uh, hard drives at a problem increases IOPS, okay? So let's talk about RAID levels. So here we're looking at a server with a single hard drive. And that is not any, by, by, by definition, that's not a RAID level, right? A redundant array of independent disks. Well, there's only one disk here, so there's no array, there's no redundancy, okay? So no RAID is no protection. If that drive fails, we lose the server. Uh, if we lose the server, then we've lost all of the files on the drive, and we've probably even lost our backups if we were storing them, okay? Assuming you only had just a single drive, I'd guess you're putting backups there too, okay? So let's start talking now about RAID levels, okay? We'll start with RAID 0, okay? RAID 0, this is a striped set. You have two disks or three disks or more, and you are simply striping the data. You can see in our example down here that 50% is written over here to disk zero and 50% is written over there to disk number one, okay? So we are making it faster, okay? That's the idea. This is a striped set, okay? There is no redundancy though. Half of the data is on disk zero, half of the data is on disk one. It's purely a speed play, okay? Now, RAID zero is kind of like running with just one disk in that there is no protection. If either one of your drives fail, okay? So just, so let's say RAID zero, uh, or drive zero fails, you've lost the server, you've lost the files, and you've probably lost all of your backups if you were storing them on your array, okay? So it's purely a speed play. That's the only reason that you do RAID zero. You want maximum IOPS, okay? Now, here's what it lo kind of looks like from a hardware perspective. We have our RAID controller down here, okay? RAID controller, array controller here. Uh, so 
plugged into that's on the board uh, plugged into that we have our two hard drives and then the array controller makes these look like one drive so the operating system just sees this as the c drive okay all right raid one raid one is a mirrored set okay notice down here in our diagram here that 100% of the data is on disk zero, and 100% of the data is on disk number one as well, okay? It's mirrored, the data. Every bit is copied, okay? So this is double work, okay? So it's a mirrored set. There is no striping here, meaning that, you know, it stripes at half of it on this one, half of it on that one, okay? This is purely a redundancy play, okay? You only get half of the storage that you paid for. Okay, so <clears throat> for example, uh, well, I, I, give me a second. I'm going to show you that on this page here. Uh, so here is our array controller. Uh, we have a 300 gig and a 300 gig, right? Um, and on our C drive, the C drive is only 300 gigs, okay? you get half of the storage, okay? So with a RAID 1 setup here, we're writing 100% of the data goes here, and then 100% of the data also goes down here. It's redundancy. You have a backup drive basically sitting there. And if we lose this drive, that's okay. We can still operate with this top drive. Okay? And we really won't even, we may even increase performance. We may not lose performance in any way because now we don't have to write things twice. Okay? So that's kind of one of the downsides. So uh, RAID 1 is good protection. If either one of the drives fail, that's okay. Server keeps going. The files are on the other drive and we don't lose our backups. Okay? So that's okay. So RAID 0, a speed play. RAID 1, a redundancy only play. Okay? Now, RAID 1 is all about mirroring, okay? There is overhead, thus it's not going to be super fast, okay? RAID 0 is all about speed. Uh, there's more IOPS than a single drive, but, you know, we've lost the redundancy, okay? So if you just compare them, you can kind of see right here. You see the A1 and A2, right? This is our striping, right? 50% on each drive here and 100% over here. All right, okay. Let's talk about RAID 5. We'll skip the others, okay? So really, as a DBA, you care about 0, 1, uh, 5, and we'll talk about 10 uh, in a minute. So RAID 5 adds striping and redundancy, okay? So if you take a look at our disks down here, we have a four-disk array, okay? So we are striping the data. You can see A1, A2, and A3, Okay. So one third of the data is written here, one third of the data is written here, and one third of the data is written here. And then we have our parity bit, AP. Okay. I'm going to talk about that on the next page here. Okay. And then when we write block B, part of block B is written here, part is here. Here's a parity bit written to disk 2 this time, and the other piece of the data is written to disk 3. So it is striped across these four drives, but we also, by the virtue of this parity bit, have redundancy. And so we call this striping with parity, and it adds this ab the ability to survive losing one of the drives in the array. Okay? So we have the benefits of striping, which if you remember from RAID 0, that was the speed play. Okay? Um, and now we have redundancy, like we did with RAID 1. Okay? So RAID 5, very good. These parity bits are what create the redundancy. Um, the parity bits do take up space, and the amount of space that the parity bits take up to provide the redundancy are the equivalent of one drive, okay? So this may be kind of difficult to understand, but in a RAID 5 array, the amount of disk space that the total array has is... All of the disk space minus the disk space of one drive, okay? And it, that's what the parity bits are there for. They are there to, in the event that we lose a drive, the parity bits can help recreate that information so that we can not lose the entire drive, okay? 
So a five disk array, each one being four terabytes, means that you have four terabytes of storage. One of those terabytes goes to the parity bits. Okay. <clears throat> and typically you have three or more uh, disks in an array. Now RAID 5 is slower for writes than RAID 0. Okay. It's interesting to know. So here's an example. Now we have three drives in this particular array. Okay. So how much total space do we have? We have three 300 gig drives. So what's our total space for the C drive? 600 gig. Okay. Because it needs 300 gig to account for that parity bit. And what are the parity bits used for? For in the event that we lose one of these drives down here, it is able to use the parity bits to recreate the information so we have not lost the drive. We'd be able to survive the loss of one drive. Okay. If we lost two drives, oops, sorry. <laughs> right. So RAID 5 is better protection. Okay. If one of the drives in the array fails, the other drives can recreate the lost data using the parity bits. Okay. But if we lose two drives, we lose the whole array. Okay. And by the way, you can rebuild the array once you've added it in here. So if we have a RAID 5 array and we lose one of the drives, we can hot swap that drive in and it will rebuild that RAID 5 array for us so that we have full protection again once, once it's finished. Okay. Okay, it's not, though, the best. RAID 5, you know, RAID 5 was the way you did things in the 90s and uh, really maybe to, to, through 2005, 2007. Um, but eventually drive space came down and RAID 10 became more popular and SANS became more popular. And so RAID 5 is now probably for your smaller servers, um, uh, not certainly for your big servers. Uh, so RAID 5 cannot lose more than one disk. And if we lose the array controller, of course, <laughs> we've lost the whole thing, right? So let's talk about RAID 10, okay? Which is RAID 1 plus 0. This is two RAID 1 arrays. That's why the 1 is at the front, okay? And then we stripe those two RAID 1, away, RAID 1 arrays, okay? Using RAID 0, okay? So RAID 10, okay? When we do this, we can now lose multiple drives, possibly without losing the whole array, okay? And we can even lose an array controller without losing the entire thing, okay? So it's both a speed and a redundancy play, okay? So here we have two RAID 1 sets, okay? You see? And then we stripe them using RAID 0, okay? All right, okay. So now if you think about it, okay, 50% of the data is written to this RAID 1 set and 50% of the data is written to this set. And we can have more than just two RAID 1 arrays in here. We could actually add in a third one over here, a fifth one, et cetera, okay. We're not limited. RAID 1 only limits us to two drives, okay, but RAID 0 does not. Okay. Uh, so we can, uh, we'll just use these two here, but now 50%, we're taking advantage of striping, okay? but we're also taking advantage of redundancy. And what does RAID 1 give us? If we lose one of the drives, have we lost the entire array? This is one drive. This is like disk 0, 1, 2, and 3. If we lose disk 0, have we lost the whole array? No. If we lose disk, where my pen, sorry, three at the same time, have we lost the array? No. Okay, that's the benefit of RAID 1. Okay. The only problem you can probably see is what if we lost two drives within the same RAID 1 set at the same time? Well, now we are <laughs> in a bad way. Okay, but what's the likelihood of that? The chances of that are incredibly slim. Okay, it's very unlikely you're going to lose both drives okay, before you can repair it. All right, so RAID 10 is great protection here. Okay? Multiple array controllers, okay? we're going to give, get redundancy. Okay? If one of our hard drives fail, we still have the mirror available. And if two hard drives fail, they're probably in separate RAID 1s, so we don't have to uh, lose both drives. Okay? Now the main drawback to RAID 10 is of course the cost. 
Uh, remember that a RAID 1 array only gives you half as much storage as you paid for. So you're, you're pretty much doubling up on your disks. Okay? Makes it a little more expensive, right? So RAID 10 is 50% capacity because they're RAID 1 arrays. And I just put together this little uh, comparison of the RAID arrays back here. RAID 10 kind of wins out on the redundant fast, uh, can survive multiple disk losses. Okay, So I, I think that in a production system of medium to large quantity, uh, you'll be using RAID 10, uh, particularly for your data files. Um, you might be using a storage area network. And again, we'll talk about more about that when we get to chapter 12.